Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and today we're going to continue on our task list series 5 for those studying for the big exam. Now, on this blog, we're going to go ahead and talk about C-2. It's going to be distinguishing between direct, indirect, and product measures of behavior. So let's get into it. <laughs> Prior to starting an intervention, we as clinicians must provide a clear and accurate depiction of a target behavior. So what it looks like, the context that it occurs in, and outline in measurable ways such as how often it happens or for how long that it happens. Now, these are all dimensions of behavior that are important for collecting relevant information, and this aids the development of an intervention for a client. So we as clinicians must remain true to the basics of conducting scientific research and using this information for relevant and valid purposes for our clients. Now, there are three methods that I'm going to talk about today, and these are important for measuring behaviors, and they're direct, indirect, and product measures. First off, let's talk about direct. Direct measures take place while observing the client, meaning that you see the behavior as soon as it happens. Anecdotal observations, or ABC recordings, are objective observations collected by a clinician. And they're important because when they observe the target behavior, it's broken down into what happens before, which is our antecedent, the behavior itself, and what occurred after, which would be the consequence. So this form of measuring behavior can also include frequency, rate, duration, inner response time, latency, magnitude, interval recordings, or time sampling. Oh my! Now, I know what I've said is a lot, and I know I can break those down for you even more, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to talk about the measuring behaviors that we do. Go ahead and keep an eye out on our next blog post, and that's gonna be discussing C-3 all the way through C-7. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail in those, just keep an eye out. It is important that we as clinicians repeatedly observe and collect data on target behaviors so that we know that we have the most up-to-date information. Another form of direct observation is conducting an ecological assessment. So essentially what the clinician does is that they are directly observing the individual in their environment. So this means that they're in the classroom with them or they're at home with them. And it's good to get a better understanding of how this individual conducts themselves where they feel most comfortable. Now, I know with these kinds of observations, what can happen is that there is a concern for reactivity, and this essentially just means that the person understands that they're being watched and they may act differently. And this may occur, but that effect is only temporary. Indirect measures occur when the behavior is not available to observe directly. So clinicians have to rely on information that is collected from caregivers, teachers, and other members of that client's inner circle or evidence from the environment. Now, what I mean by that is that in these instances, a person assessing the behavior does not see the behavior themselves, so the information can be subjective or unreliable at times. This is the reason that clinicians should not go basing all of their interventions on indirect measures alone. Indirect measures can take the form of interviews, surveys, checklists, or reading documents from medical providers or previous companies that provided information about that particular client. Now, when interviewing an individual, i.e., let's say we're talking about the caregiver, there are two kinds of indirect assessments that occur. Now, they are either open-ended or close-ended. So open-ended assessments give the interviewee the opportunity to go into as much detail as possible as they can about the particular behavior. While close-ended assessments typically limit the interviewee to just responding to a scale or saying yes or no. Another type of indirect measure relies on permanent product measures of behavior, which are measured from the effects that the behavior has on the environment, but the behavior has not actually been observed. Permanent products are great to use when the clinician cannot be with the client. For example, let's say that we have a teenager who is our client and they're working on completing household chores for reinforcers. Now, obviously the clinician is not going to be living with the client and they're not going to be there with them all the time. So you have to rely on seeing the clean dishes the following day or the next session that you're there. And you have to check on the progress that's being made. So therefore, when you come into the home, you see the clean dishes. That's your permanent product. So, as I mentioned, this video and we discussed indirect measures, direct measures, and product measures of behavior. 
and I wish you all the best luck as you're studying out there and keep an eye out for the next set of our blogs. <laughs>